For those of you that like to drive your cars a little bit fast, how fast do you think you could safely drive the Mars rover? That little vehicle that we've put up on Mars that's controlled remotely here from Earth? Before you answer that question, remember that it takes light anywhere between 4 and 24 minutes to travel between Earth and Mars depending on the relative positions of the planet. So on an average case, you're talking 10 minutes to get a radio signal up from your steering wheel on Earth up to the, the vehicle on Mars. So imagine yourself turning the steering wheel a couple of degrees, 10 minutes up, 10 minutes back. OK, now I see that I'm looking at something different. I'm going to put my foot on the gas pedal uh, just a little bit, go forward a few inches, 10 minutes up, 10 minutes back. Oh, I'm about to hit a rock. Turn this way, 10 minutes up, 10 minutes back. You can, you can see that even if you were a very skilled driver, it would take you a long time to get that Mars rover uh, between point A and point B working in that fashion. The difference, of course, is the speed of the feedback. When you're driving a regular car on Earth, you can see immediately what you're looking at when you turn. Or when you're uh, putting your foot on the gas pedal, you can feel what, what's going on there. The speed of the feedback affects how quickly you can drive, and the speed of the feedback affects how quickly you can work in general. This applies to software development. It's not uncommon for a developer or a team to have to wait hours or days or weeks sometimes to get feedback on how the code they just added or changed in the system affected things. And that is a very slow way to work. And that's where continuous integration comes in. Continuous integration is about setting up fast feedback loops. We talked about fast feedback loops on your individual workstation when we talked about automated unit testing. Continuous integration is about fast feedback loops that let you know right away or very quickly about how the code you just wrote or changed uh, interacts with everybody else's code, the, the problem of integration. And as a practice, it's fairly simple. Two basic pieces, of con uh, two basic pieces that go into continuous integration. One is that every developer on the team checks in his or her code multiple times per day. Frequent small check-ins rather than waiting till a whole piece is done to check in. And second is that every time anyone checks in, that is verified by an automated build, and which includes testing. That's usually handled by some sort of continuous integration server. So if you've got that kind of feedback, I can write some code, I can check it in, and within minutes I can know if I accidentally broke something that someone else was working on or something that I didn't understand or I failed to check in a file. It's, it can be a very powerful practice if you keep in mind a couple of uh, important principles. First is that your continuous integration build has to run fast. There's a, there's a threshold at, beyond which people will not wait around for the build to finish. And I found that that threshold is about 10 minutes. As soon as your CI build creeps up beyond 10 minutes, people will stop checking in if it's the end of the day. They'll stop checking in if they're about to go to lunch. And they'll probably even go on to something else after they've checked in. They're not going to sit around and wait for the results for more than about 10 minutes. So there's a magic number that if you can keep it to five, even better. But the build has to run quickly for it to be valuable as a feedback mechanism. Secondly, the build, the CI build has to be reliable. As soon as you get a couple of false negatives where the, the build breaks, but then you dig into it and it turns out that it's the build system itself that's not working properly, or I've got a bunch of bad tests that, that really uh, are, are telling me something's broken when something isn't, then people start to ignore the continuous integration uh, feedback. And the third piece is that you have to make it difficult to ignore the feedback for everyone on the team. Having the CI server send out email to everyone on the team is just not sufficient. It's too easy to ignore email, filter it into a box, an inbox that you're going to read later. I found things like an audible siren or some other sound that plays in the team area when a, when a build breaks, or even flashing lights uh, that are red when a build breaks. Those are the kinds of things that are much harder for people to ignore. And I promise you, if you put that in place, people will fix a broken build right away because the sound or the lights or something else will drive them crazy. And that's what you want. You want a broken build to be a big deal. You want people to address it immediately. That's the power of continuous integration. So if you'd rather drive a Ferrari than the Mars rover, at least in the, in the speed at which you're able to get stuff done on your software development approach, you need an effective continuous integration strategy.